Hey everybody, in this video we are going to graph polar equations and we're going to use symmetry to do so to make our graphing time shorter. So symmetry tests for polar graphs but in that Cartesian xy plane. You learned about symmetry back in algebra of graphs but let's go through it here. So I'm going to give you three points here. The first one, that your graph can be symmetric about the x-axis if the following is true. The point r comma theta is on your graph but then also the point r comma negative theta is on the graph. Or you can say the same thing, negative r and then pi minus theta. Um, just a quick reminder, when we were learning about polar coordinates, if you make the radius negative, your point is then 180 degrees away from where you want it to be. So that's why this is pi minus theta or 180 minus theta. So that would be this type of symmetry where you have a point over here, r comma theta, and then there's another point on your graph directly across or flipped over the x-axis. The second symmetry is about the y-axis. So your point r comma theta is on your graph, but then also the point, I'm gonna go to this one, is negative r and common negative theta is on your graph, okay? And so in this case, you have this type of symmetry where you have a point r comma theta, but then directly across or flipped over the y-axis is another point on your same graph. And then the third type is symmetry about the origin. So your point r comma theta is on your graph, but so is the point negative r comma theta. So that symmetry goes through the origin. And so this one here, um, this one's a little interesting, and I'll show you an example with this. It's more so like a rotation. So it's not, if you think about it, this points very nicely straight through this line through the origin. But let's say that you had a point somewhere else, like up here, you would kind of have to do like a rotation around the origin to find your next point. Now, the way that you test for these is you plug in different parts of the coordinate. So we're going to do some examples, but we'll plug in negative theta and test for symmetry about the x-axis. We'll plug in negative r and test for symmetry about the origin. And if you wanted to test for symmetry about the y-axis, you would plug in both negative r and negative theta. So let's take a look. We are going to graph the curve r equals 1 minus cosine theta, but we're going to graph it in the xy plane. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test for symmetry on the x-axis. So I want to plug in negative theta into my equation. So if I plug in negative theta into the original equation, well, what can I do to simplify this? This requires that we go back to what we learned from trig. And if you recall, with cosine, cosine of something negative is the same as cosine of something positive. If you take a look, just pick any angle. Let's pick pi over 4. The cosine value here is square root 2 over 2. But if I put a minus sign on that angle, and so that would make me go um, clockwise from 0, I'd be down here at negative pi over 4, or in other words, 7 pi over 4. But my cosine, cosine value is the same. And so cosine, this is always true. Cosine of something negative is the same as cosine of the positive angle. And so what I can do is take my equation that I was just working on and say that that's the same thing as 1 minus cosine positive theta. And because this matches my original equation, that's how I can prove that, okay, both of these points lie on my graph, and so there is symmetry about the x-axis. So then, after I know that, I can graph a little easier. My time graphing is going to be shorter because I don't have to find so many points. So all you do to find points is just pick a few angle values to plug in for theta and plug them into your equation for r. So I'm just going to pick some nice ones, 0, pi over 3, pi over 2, and so on. And you need to get the cosine of those angles, but then say 1 minus that number. So let's just um, analyze a couple of them. Let's do pi over 2 right here. Cosine of pi over 2, if you don't know it, you can always go back to your unit circle. Cosine is 0 at pi over 2. And so 1 minus 0 is 1. Let's pick this one over here. 2 pi over 3, cosine of 2 pi over 3, is negative one half. And so if I say one minus negative one half, that's where the three halves comes from. And you can just do this for a handful of points. And if it's not enough points for you to be able to connect the points on your graph and see the shape, then you just pick a few more. And so what we have from those few points is these ones that I have plotted here. Now, like I just said, like let's say you plot one, two, three, four, five points, but you're not sure, you're not confident that you're gonna swoop your curve around like this. Then you can just plot more points, like maybe over here, and here, and here, and then you'll see this shape pretty clearly. Now, we can stop here because of this 
extra work we did at the beginning where we tested for symmetry, we already know this graph is symmetric about the x-axis. So we're done as long as we flip our graph over and just mirror the shape. And so that is our graph. OK, everybody, let's finish this up with one more example. So graph the curve r squared equals 4 cosine theta in the xy plane. We're going to test for all three symmetries on this one. So x-axis symmetry, plug in negative theta right into our equation. And from what we just talked about, we know cosine of negative theta is the same as cosine of positive theta. And so we have the same equation we started with. And so both points r comma theta and r comma negative theta are on our graph, which implies symmetry about the x-axis. Now let's do origin symmetry. This time we plug in negative r into our original equation and we simplify. And when you square something negative, it turns positive. And this brings us back to our original equation again. And so negative r comma theta is also on our graph. And so our graph is symmetric about the origin. Now you could also test for y-axis symmetry, but both of these together, because they both worked as far as symmetry goes, it implies the y-axis symmetry. So the points negative r comma negative theta are on our graph as well. So here's some points for us to plot, and we'll go ahead and draw this graph out. Um, now in order to do this though, I did solve for r, so I just square root both sides of this equal sign, and then put a plus and minus, and then plugged in a few theta values, and then there's this preliminary um, or intermediate step here where I found the cosine value of these angles that were chosen and then plug them into the square root and then times by two. So there's, that's where these numbers came from. So let's plot these points on an actual graph and then that will be our curve. Okay, so here's some polar graphing paper. Let's go ahead and plot our points and see if we can figure out what's going on with this graph. And we're gonna use symmetry as well. So our, one of our first points is an angle of zero, so we are on the x-axis, and our radius goes out to two, also negative two, but we're just gonna focus on one part at a time. Next, I'm looking at pi over six as my angle, and then we're gonna go out about 1.9. So notice the concentric circles. You're, the first dark one, well actually 0.5 is the first dark one, but then the next one is one. We're almost all the way out to two, but not quite, so about roughly right there. So that's the first two points, not including the negatives. Then pi over four would be the next angle line. And we go out to 1.7, which is maybe about right there. Then the third one here, or fourth one, pi over three. And then we're gonna go out to 1.4 distance from our origin. And then the next one, pi over two, our radius is zero. So we're actually back down here at the origin. And so if we connect these, just a rough drawing here, we get this shape. Now we already determined that there's symmetry about two places, the x-axis and the origin. So let me show you real quick before I do the x-axis. The origin symmetry would look like this, and it's going to be a rough sketch, but like that. That would be origin symmetry. Then the x-axis symmetry, let me just do it in another color so you can see, would just be the same shape flipped down around the x-axis. And so this would be our graph. So I do want to just show you a better version of that graph. This one's done with the computer, not by my hand drawing. So this is our graph on polar coordinate um, graphing paper. And, but the question was to put it on the XY plane. And so if we just change the coordinate system in the background, this is the, what it would look like. Same shape, just a different coordinate system for um, how we would plot those points. And that's it for this one.